All right, we are ready to present Stardew Multi Life. This has been a culmination. This has been a brainchild of mine for several months. Um, you know, just thinking of long term projects that show what the channel is and, you know, something that could be familiar, but something new, a new adventure. Again, I know it's like Stardew, it's like, oh, you know, just create your own character, go about, do your own thing, all that noise and stuff like i mean that's absolutely what it is and we've had a ton of fun with stardew before being uh showing off a fully mod my first modded playthrough um me at showing off my og file and all the fun things that like 1.5 and 1.6 have had to offer and everything but this is this is like again this is something that i've been working on on and off for several months and i will show you guys why because multi-life as an overview multi-life is exactly that if that'll go away, whatever. Multi-life is exactly that. It is multiple lives in Stardew. We're creating 12 different files for 12 very different experiences. Like it said on the, uh, key, the key art, it's 12 farms, 12 lives, 12 stories. Um, I mean, like, you, anybody can do just one, which I absolutely invite all of y'all to play Stardew, because it's so good, and it's so comfy. And again, Stardew has been, like, the basis. Like, I know we've all grown up with, like, Harvest Moon and everything, but, like, Stardew has become, like, the basis of, like, farming sims and farm games, because it's so good. But, um, basically what it is, each character, thinking about it, it's like, how can I do it to show off, like, so much, like, do so much of Stardew that I don't typically do? So it's like, we're creating 12 characters because each is going to have their own romantic interest. Each character is going after each bachelor and bachelorette of Stardew. And I've never seen that before. We've done Harvey, and we've, uh, done, we've had Shane, but we've never done any of the others. Because, again, you typically make a character that is after your own image, so... And they're also going to have their own decor, their own style. Um, again, I always typically st stick with some of the same clothing, the same decor, and everything. So, you know, like it says on the doc, which again, exclamation mark, multi-life. Um, this is getting me out of what I'm calling my duck of all trades. This is getting me out of my own typical patterns to play with different stuff. I'm also giving them what I'm going to call their own job, their own specialties. They're all going to either be doing a mix of all the uh, farming, mining, foraging, um, crafting, all kinds of stuff. And... Uh, with the animals, with the crops, with all kind, all the things that the game has to offer. Again, I'm the one that like, I always like stick to fishing, but then try to like min max and do all the things that either makes a lot of money or, uh, you know, progresses all the job, the, um, the job skills, the story, etc. Um, the other fun thing is, is some of these characters were created by members of the community. A while back when I first announced this project, I put out a channel points redemption for those of you that have been watching for a while. Um, it's like, hey, if y'all want to create a character uh, for me to play in Stardew Multi-Life, here's your opportunity. And we had several of them submit for it. So we will show you guys those characters as well. Now the goal, again, I know in Stardew it feels like there is no goal aside from like 100% perfection and everything, but <laughs> this is multi-life. This isn't multi-generation. <laughs> <laughs> I can't play this for, you know, 10 plus, I can't play this for 10 years trying to get everybody to, uh, you know, 100% perfection. So, narrowing it down, the goal is going to be finish the community center. No Joja. No Joja. No Joja whatsoever. I will say, um, there were some mods that were like, you know, redeeming the owner of the, the local Joja store and all that such and the other. But uh, no, we are doing community center and only community center. I've done Joja once for an achievement and a community event, and I'm not doing it again. But uh, finish community center. And also when grandpa's evaluation comes up on spring one of year three, we want to aim to get all four candles. We want the best rating we can get. And that's within the, the uh, limitations, limitations of a... Uh, each character's jobs and their specialties. I'm going to try my hardest. I'm probably still going to slip up at times um, and still kind of fall back into my old patterns. Chat, keep me accountable. But I'm going to try to stick as much to the script of these characters as possible. Even when it comes to making money, everything else, the only 
The only uh, exception to that is with the community center, because as you see, community center goals are shuffled. I've never played with the setting before. I've always typically played with vanilla settings as, ev as everyone else has. So the one exception to this rule of sticking to your job and your specialties for each character is finishing the community center goals. Um, so they may go out of their way just to make sure that we get to finish the community center no matter what it takes and such. Um, but yeah, community center goals are going to be shuffled. The rewards will also be shuffled, which all of that should be fun. And then of course the mine rewards. This is a setting that I do believe is in the vanilla game that they added over the class few updates over the years to shuffle these things. So again, just another little extra challenge for this. Um, because again, I've done vanilla. Those of you that have played Stardew have probably done vanilla goals and uh, so forth. So again, just trying to make this as challenging as possible. I could have gotten really crazy. And I know I pitched this to you guys a while back. It was like, you know, what if we did some crazy thing where uh, um, we, we like set a timer. We set a timer and then like every like 30 minutes or something to an hour, I shuffled to another character. But then everybody was like, no, that's too crazy. That's going to be too, too uh, time consuming or uh, intense, stressful. I could see that because having to shuffle so many mods in and out and reset all the settings and everything. Um, absolutely. So we're going to be doing one character at a time. So we're going to be able to get to know each character. Um, but uh, we will see just how long it takes. Again, this is a long-term project for the channel. I expect this to take from now at least a year or more because, I mean, not every time we're going to be doing multi-life because, again, we're still going to be doing, we're doing randos. We're going to be doing short plays. We've got all our October games. Um, we've got other releases, other stuff that will be coming up. But at the very least, Stardew and multi-life is something that I can keep coming back to. That was one of the things when researching is like, you know, what do I want a long-term project to be? And it's just something that I can easily just, you know, put down and pick back up. And with Stardew, kind of like that, it's that easy. Um, another thing I've already told you guys about, there are going to be lots of mods. Many are going to be unique to each character. And if you want to know what mods I'm going to be using that are consistent throughout all the files that are going to be for each individual character, exclamation mark multi-life has the entire doc for all the information, including all the characters that you guys are about to meet. But you guys, when I say lots of mods, there, there. I'm only, I'm only using like 70 plus mods across all of these files and such. But there are thousands, there are tens of thousands of mods on a Nexus for Stardew Valley. And not only that, it's only also coming, combing through those that are up to date for like 1.6 um, and everything else. So I have literally, for the last few months, been combing through thousands of mods, either to suit my character's tastes, needs, um, something new, something fresh, something up to date, uh, just to, again, just make everything a different experience for each of them. So, but yeah, uh, again, the next point likely to be at least a year plus of Stardew content, even longer. There's still going to be plenty of randomizers. There's still going to be paper, paper Mario win, uh, rando Wednesday. We're still going to be learning Zooter. We're still going to play demos and all of our other games that I've got promised for you guys and stuff. So it's not going to be absolutely all Stardew content, but again, just something that is going to be easy to be put, uh, picked up and put back down just with ease. It's great. All right, but are y'all ready to meet the characters of Stardew Multi-Life? But first, did you know 15% of viewers may have a Twitch Prime sub they can use on their favorite streamer? Soul subs are also up to 30% off till October 1st for subbing in advance. Exclamar exclamation mark sub for our goals. I had to. <laughs> for all of the memes in all the streams or stream you guys may or not may not be in, I had to I had to put this in as a meme, so... Again, just so you guys know, we do have sub goals. It is September. You can still save money, get cute emotes, add free viewing, etc. Hashtag shameless plug. Yes. <laughs> All right, for real. All right, back to the presentation. Of course, um, if I'm the one that's making this, I want to participate. So it's me. You know, like I said, you can't expect me to play different Stardew characters without me making a cameo. I know I have, you know, made my character before a little bit different. 
and uh, everything. But I wanted to get in on this because there have been so many mods that I've seen. So it makes sense for me to make my own character of me and have sort of a different experience than we did previously. So style, cute, of course. Uh, brights and pastel colors because I'm coming into my pastel era. Skirts, I like skirts all that noise um decor is for my farm is mostly going to be like whites pastels naturals etc um we're also going to be romancing alex this is the first time that i am going to be actually legitimately romancing and marrying alex um i did do that one file i think on my og or something where it's like you know i got the romance all the male characters and you get that one cutscene that you either get roasted or you get saved if you have a bunny foot on you. But um, again, we I've only ever romanced Harvey and Shane, so Alex is going to be somebody new and whatnot. I'm also giving myself the new Meadowlands farm. This is something that came out with 1.6, um, which is you start out with a coop, two chickens, and a whole bunch of like grass that increases their um, affections further, like the bluegrass, so. It's like, if I'm going to be playing this, I'm going to play with the new stuff. So we're going to be doing Meadowlands Farm. And we're going to have the Mushroom Cave, which uh, also comes with a new feature, I believe called the Dehydrator, which will be very interesting. Um, I've always typically picked a uh, Fruit Cave. So the Mushroom Cave, especially with 1.6, them giving them a Dehydrator is also something new. So uh, my specialties are going to be the coops, of course, with the chickens, ducks, go figure, and geese. Um, something else that I gave the option to those of you that did submit to become a multi-life character is a choice to have at least one uh, animal, one animal of your choice, if I could find a functioning mod for it, and I found geese, and they look absolutely adorable. Y'all know we like geese, Untitled Goose Game, honk, any goose, any geese, any honks, um... So I've got geese. I'm also going to only be farming um, the new crops. Um, that is going to be my limitation in terms of farming. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, the new crops is that each season with, again, 1.6 has one new crop in it. Uh, carrots in spring, summer squash in summer, uh, broccoli in fall, and powder melons in winter, of course. I'm also going to be doing fishing because, of course, I fish. It's what I do. And honeybees, because of course we like bees. We do like bees. We have a lot of bees, actually. Well, not a lot. We have a uh, presence of bees, regular bees, honeybees, carpenter bees, bumblebees around our house, around our farm, outside IRL. So it just made sense for me to have honeybees in uh, my file. And uh, my job typically is going to be cooking. I will tell you guys, I actually found a couple of mods that increase the cooking. Um, capabilities of Stardew, including uh, new recipes for all of the new crops and uh, vanilla undiscovered recipes and such that you'll get mailed to you at some point in the play in the playthrough. So it was like, I like to cook. Y'all know I like to cook. I like to play Stardew. So I figure my job, you know, one of the ways I'm going to be making money is cooking and such. I will also preface that a lot of these um, files will likely be kind of tweaked here and there if I find other stuff that's really cool if anyone else is like hey you should add this or add this mod from this character I'm not going to go absolutely crazy and say sky's the limit but this will be you know tweakable as we go on because of course with the new project you have to iron out uh the kinks and everything else so uh this is still just a good basis for the game but all right but that is me so our next character Alana oh man Hers is actually one I'm really looking forward to playing based off of the mods and the looks that I've got for her. Again, I'm going to try to love everybody equally and enjoy all their playthroughs equally because it's still going to be Stardew. But all of the mods that I found for Alana, oh man, they're so cute, y'all. They're so good. Which, of course, Alana, unabashedly cute and girly girl. Alana loves the sea, cute animals, flowers, and anything magical girl. Oh man. Almost in a way, I kind of thought of her with a uh, Sailor Moon and all the other magical girl uh, looks for her. Just, again, unashamedly girly and such. I didn't go too crazy with the pink, but uh, there may be a good bit of pink and other cute stuff in her playthrough. So, you know, gotta be. 
not ashamed. But of course, her style is going to be cute, feminine, pink, and dreamy. Of course, decor will be pastels, cute furniture, lots of pink. One of the first things I thought of with her is she needs a she shed. She needs a place for her because I know that's always been like a thing. It's like, oh, women always get a she shed. So they have, you know, it's like men have a man cave, women have a she shed or uh, whatever. So instantly when I thought of her being like a girly girl and making her own place, I instantly thought in capital letters, she shed, she needs a she shed. So that's what it's gonna be. I also kind of thought of her as sort of like, you know, a Cali girl in a way, which is kind of, uh, just kind of wraps with everything. Um, she's also going to be romancing Sam. Again, someone else I have not seen to completion um, through marriage, etc., all those events. So this is going to be cool. Because Sam, again, all of these characters, all the bachelors and bachelorettes have something to contribute. And it's going to be interesting. Of course, since she is kind of a Cali girl, she's going to have the beach farm. Shut up. Ads interrupting me. Ads be interrupting me. Hold. But yeah, she is going to have the beach farm. I th think... I think I actually did play a co-op file at some point where uh, I did play a beach farm with friends as kind of like, you know, discovering the new farm. This was way back when. This was a couple years back when Beach Farm was first starting out. Um, of course, I'm also going to give her the uh, fruit cave. Again, it was just kind of a choice between who would benefit from having a fruit cave, who would benefit from having the mushroom cave, um, etc. But uh, her specialties are going to be flowers. Almost everything flowers in terms of farming. And there's going to be a lot of flowers. And not only just the vanilla ones. Because there are mods out there that add even more flowers. And more capabilities of flowers. I.e. possibly giant flowers. You'll see. Um, she's also going to be doing rabbits. Uh, because again, cute, girly, girly girl, magical girl, Serena, Usagi, you name it. Um, and also fishing. If you're going to be on the beach, you might as well fish. Um, and then she's also going to be raising cacti. Again, something else I thought of um, when making these characters, along with who I was pairing them with, is like, how can I give them um, specialties that will mix with like the favorites, the liked or loved items for their romantic partner? And of course, Sam really loves cacti. I mean, cacti is something that's a little rare. Once we get it, you know, we'll have it. It's not going to be absolute, and this is going to be for everybody. Some are going to be harder to get than others, but this is still going to be a focus for uh, her file. So, of course, her job, since she is going to be growing a lot of flowers and living on a beach farm, is she is going to be a florist and a beachcomber. There were a lot of mods out there. Again, I tried not to go too crazy because there were so many mods out there. So I stuck to just, you know, giving her to grow so many flowers and everything. But yeah, again, you do, you do, you do digging through thousands of mods like I do. You will find a lot of stuff out there. All right. That is Alana. Again, really looking forward to her because hers is absolutely adorable with all of her mods and UI that I found for hers. Oops that one all right next we've got Clarice Clarice went through a couple of different changes um I almost wanted to have her start out as being like very overly goth and kind of like not like dark but just like very um goth and such but as I continue to develop her character and thinking about again thinking about building a story um around these characters like she'd be romancing Harvey um, all these other things. I store. I started to soften her. Like she's still gonna have, you know, like dark colors, purples, and all that. But it's like really just about being herself and what she loves, with still having her own style. But uh, she loves her quiet farmhouse in the forest, along with her library cafe, vi cafe vibes and soft gothic style. Of course, style is purple and darks. As you can see, she's kind of got like you know, a black purplish jumper with her lavender colors and her hair and everything. I wanted to like try to make them all look different, of course, as much as I know personally. Um, of course, her decor is going to be um, a library because she loves to read. Cafe because of, um, you know, the mood of like tea and everything. And then of course, plushies because I mean, soft goth girls can still love plushies. 
and all that noise. So there you go. Uh, she will be romancing Harvey again, just kind of thinking of how these two would meet, would work together is that, um, you know, Harvey has, you know, the doctor, he has his interests, a little bit of a nerd, um, a little awkward. Clarice has her own interests, loves books and studying and uh, all this and just the quiet of the valley. So again, just thinking through how to make these stories come together when developing all these characters. Of course, she will have the forest farm. Um, I did do a forest farm. Did we do one as bullseye with my modded one, I think? I forget. But uh, she will have the mushroom cave, and there is a reason I'm giving her the mushroom cave. Um, because it has the dehydrator. And one of the mods that I gave her, because of course, if she's going to be running a cafe, um, she needs tea. And I found a number of like really cool looking tea making uh, mods and such. And so you need the dehydrator so you can make tea leaves and such. So you can make like your different teas and stuff. So that's going to be cool. But of course, her specialties are going to be coffee, teas, foraging because it's the forest farm, uh, wheat, uh, jams and pickles, pigs, truffle oil, and uh, cafe recipes. Um, Again, you think about going to a cafe, um, places with coffee, with tea, with treats and pastries and breads and all that stuff. Um, so that is what that is going to encompass. So of course, her job is going to be library cafe owner. Special teas. <laughs> We're supreme out when I need it. <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I look. I kind of look forward to hers because I haven't. I've tr I've tested, but I've tried not to go too deep into some of these mods to figure out what they do, and such. All right. Next, we've got Lucinta. Um, hers was kind of interesting. Now, again, some of these are going to have a lot more mods than others, but they're still going to have that experience of uh, just different settings, different characters, and uh, showing off all that the game has to offer, etc. But Lucinta, always seeking adventure, Lucinta wants a mix of thrills and quiet in the countryside. Um, her style is going to be uh, lots of reds, of uh, romantic style, such as, uh, such as uh, renaissance, pirates, um, uh, long flowing skirts, etc. When I was thinking of Lucinta, I almost kind of thought about her in the terms of primrose, you know, minus some elements and such. You know, just kind of like a very, like, romantic story adventure style and such. So, of course, her decor is going to be more, more romantic of uh, Renaissance, um, which is fitting considering she is going to be romancing Elliot, who is the author, who's the tale teller of the, of the uh, valley, who just, you know, he lives on the beach, but he's right, he's the author. Um, uh... I feel like I have tried to romance Elliot before, but I think I like tried to pursue Elliot, but then I think I ended up like romancing Harvey at some point in my OG. So I, I've like seen a little bit of Elliot's story, but I have not like, you know, gone, you know, go, you know, full on marriage life and everything. Um, of course, since she loves adventure, we are going to give her the wilderness farm, which I have never played with the wilderness farm before. And they say that it's one of the more difficult farms because, of course, it's wilderness. So there's a chance of monsters and everything spawning on it at night. Uh, she is also going to get the fruit cave. Her specialty will be combat, of course. She's going to have to fight her way through her own farm. She's also going to get ducks because, again, you know, thinking about all of... Um, all the characters and the romantic interests is that Elliot does like uh, duck feathers, so that works. Of course, um, Red, even while trying to finalize everything for uh, multi-life, I realized that I didn't have them doing something every season, um, be it crops, animals, whatever else. So I've just been kind of tweaking some things here and there. So I've given her red crops, so every season she's going to be growing like every single uh, red crop that... Uh, that is to offer and everything which will help since she also is getting wine she's getting fruit trees um you know like a romantic type you know likes to make wine likes to have a little glass of wine at night and everything i'm also giving her slimes um again just to go with the kind of you know thrilling adventure and you know maybe she finds sli slimes cute and such uh, again just 
it's making more sense in my head than it is, you know, me speaking it and such. Gotta protect the animals from the monsters. True. That is true. That's gonna be interesting. That's another little twist that's gonna be there. So we will find out what happens, especially with all the ducks. But, um, in doing my research and what kind of job, again, I try to give everybody a different and unique job. So, um, instead of saying, like, you know, she's a pirate or whatever, I actually found the term swashbuckler was actually a really good term for her. Um, because, you know, a swashbuckler has, like, more noble purposes. They still have a sense of adventure and, uh, romance and all that. So, swashbuckler, I felt, was a good fit for Lucinta. The other thing is, as you guys can see, I'm also including the, uh, character's, uh, sprites. But I've also tried to, uh, you know, give their their names, like, kind of their own style. Like, it would be, like, their signature and such. That'll play more into it a little bit later. But, all right, the next character, Gwen Cerise. Y'all know that I've been, um, you know, dabbling a little bit in uh, uh, either a uh, poorly French accent or uh, because of me reading my books and exploring uh, Quebec, which is more heavily French-influenced and such. So when I was thinking about Gwen Cerise, I was definitely thinking about more of, you know, France, Paris, um, all of that influence and such. So way back when I was developing her character... Um, because I will say the other thing is, is that I also used uh, BehindTheNames.com, which gives like a whole bunch of like definitions, uh, origins, history as to where a name comes from. So every name that I would give to almost every single character, um, I would, you know, plug into that or research on that website to try to find what the meaning was. So of course, Gwen, uh, Gwendolyn. Um, is very uh, romantic, a little bit more of a French name. And then Cerise is also a French name that means cherry. So um, so when trying to decide between Grant, Gwen or Cerise, they both just sounded good. So we were just, you know, uh, thus came, became, she became a Gwen Cerise. But uh, Gwen loves making fresh bed bread to pair with cheeses and wine from the French countryside, small touches that remind her of Paris. Um, we don't know where Stardew Valley is. We don't know where all these characters came from, of course, without a background. But, um, uh, her style is going to be, uh, neutrals and soft tones. You know, as you can see, she has kind of, uh, you know, the soft blue and, uh, rose pink pants, uh, she's got going on. Uh, her decor is going to be kind of, a uh, cottage vibes, cozy, kind of lived in, but not, like, messy, in a sense, but just, like, very soft and welcoming and such uh she is going to be romancing shane um we have romanced shane before in a, a different like... winner shush in a, a different uh file when we did uh my first modded playthrough is bullseye technically but uh again trying to make it where these characters fit to fit together you know, it's like Shane can still, Shane can use a little bit of a soft influence, a soft, hardworking influence and such. So, uh, she will also have the normal farm. The other thing with this is that I'm trying to use every single farm layout that the game has to offer. So, of course, there's going to be some overlap and, uh, you know, not all the cool, exciting stuff. But I feel normal farm still works with her with everything she's going to be doing. Um, she'll also get the fruit cave, which works with her... Uh, you know, liking to make wine, etc. So, of course, her specialties are going to be uh, wheat, tomatoes, peppers, cherry trees. She's also going to raise cows and chickens while doing uh, artisan goods like mayo and cheese and wine. Again, thinking back to how the characters are making stuff that kind of lines up with the likes and loves of their romantic interest. So, of course, you know, peppers, wheat, toma wheat tomatoes, cheese makes pizza etc. All that noise. But uh, just kind of, you know, kind of a, a countryside, a French countryside feel to all of this. Um, so, of course, her job is going to be, and again, I might butcher this, um, boulangerie owner. And that is a bakery. It is different from the kind of bakery you would think of here in that a boulangerie is a bakery in France that has to make its own bread in order to be called a boulangerie. So she's going to be, you know, having cafe vibes, but still making like her own bread, all of her stuff that you would kind of think of with France or Paris and whatnot, such as uh, baguettes, croissants, um, all the like farm countryside raised stuff and everything. So 
that is hers. All right. And then the next one, this is our first viewer made uh, character. We have Cat, who was made by E.K. Roos 1227. Uh, that is also included in the doc, exclamation mark, multi-life. Um, now what I did, I'll go ahead and preface this. Um, what I did is I said, hey, design your character, you know, does, uh, figure out a name, your farm name, your favorite thing, um, what kind of pet you wanted, um, etc. And then I still kind of worked with them in terms of what they wanted, what their preferences were, um, what kind of farm they wanted, who they wanted to pursue, what kind of goods they wanted to grow. And then I just kind of started building on it, uh, finding the mods and other things that would fit their style, their interests and stuff. And of course I did get approval from them. I sent them their slides so they would know what I would be saying about their characters, what would be in the presentation. But uh, this is from EK, so thank you, of course, for you guys submitting to be a part of Multi-Life and be excited about it. But uh, she loves cute, dark, dark, spooky, and frogs, with eyes only for a cute, dark boy who also loves frogs. <laughs> if that doesn't tell you who she's romancing, I don't think that, I, you know. But uh, her style, she said, is lots of blues, black, and cute things. She also wants a decor of dark, cute, and cozy. Um, she will be romancing Sebastian, you know, a cute, dark type boy who loves frogs, because she also loves frogs. She also wanted the wilderness farm, you know, a little bit of danger, and the fruit cave. So her specialties are going to be mining, combat, seasonal and rare fruits to make uh, jam, wine, and pickles. And she also wants to raise uh, slimes and void chickens, again, fitting into that uh, interest of their romantic partner. So the job that I gave Kat, I called her a spelunker and maker of dark artisan goods. Because, of course, you got void chickens, you're going to make, like, a, a void mayonnaise, uh, all the, like, rare, rare fruits and seasonal stuff to make all the artisan goods with. But that is Kat. All right, and now we're getting into the gentlemen. And of course, if I'm thinking of guys and girls, the one guy that always comes to mind is of course my own husband. So if I'm making a file, um, I immediately thought of making one for him because I've made myself or iterations of myself in Stardew plenty of times. So making one for my husband and formulating it around that and making a story for him also made sense. I know when I first pitched this idea to him and it's like, hey, if I make a character for you, um, who out of these bachelorettes would you think you would want to pursue or, you know, think of me in such a way? But we'll get to that. Um, Spirit hopes to improve the lands and lives around him, including his own, loves plants and building things. When I told him this tagline this morning, it was <laughs> he got a little embarrassed and just said I love you. Um, but, you know, years of marriage and everything, I feel it fits him to a T, because that's what he wants to do, especially with our own homesteading and farming and gardening and community and stuff like that. Um, his style is, you know, anything, he loves greens, any, he literally said anything he could get dirty, you know, he's fine with because that's how he works. Um, I also, uh, his style is also going to be flannel and button ups because that's other stuff that he likes to wear and whatnot. <laughs> decor. When I literally asked what his decor would be, because I also asked him what kind of farm he wanted, um, he literally jokingly said, leaf it be because he wanted the forest farm so i figure that would be just kind of a little nod a little chuckle to what it is so it's just leaf it be you know be whatever it is or greens or uh plants things like that um he chose penny from all of the bachelorettes he was kind of stuck between three of them when i was uh debating uh what kind of characters um uh, which of the characters he wanted to pick either the ones that he liked and or ones that reminded him of me um so he picked penny he was also kind of torn between uh abigail um and uh, leah but uh he ended up settling on penny he also chose the forest farm and the mushroom cave again with the dehydrator um for good reason so his specialties of course are going to be forging he wants to raise uh, kale, tomatoes, peppers, blueberries, summer squash, flowers, and tea. 
um, coffee, wild seeds, eggplants, while also developing jam and wine and uh, raising honeybees. Because literally, this is kind of a mixed culmination from the two of us of uh, what we do around here. Uh, plants and things that we've raised in the past. We've raised lots of greens, tons of tomatoes, plenty of peppers. We have our giant blueberry bush. We've done lots of squash, my zinnias. Um, he loves tea, so of course tea is a no-brainer. He enjoys coffee, so coffee was a no-brainer. Wild seeds, of course, because forest farm. Eggplants, because we've raised plenty of eggplants, and uh, so forth. And so, of course, his job is going to be homesteader. So his is another one I kind of look forward to uh, fleshing out in a story. All right, our next gentleman is Kaito. Kaito. Words. Um, uh, Kaito take over, takes over his Oji-san's farm. Again, Oji, Oji-san is a Japanese for grandfather. Um, and with him, I kind of thought about uh, more, again, just, you know, that I haven't experienced with. We watch a lot of anime. That doesn't mean I know enough about Japanese, but I know some here and there about Japanese culture. All those sounds so yummy. Yes! They're so good, Crystal. Oh, man. Um, also, you want to be called... Are you uh, Crystal in? Crystal? I like, to, I like to get names right. So. But uh, Kaito takes over his Oji-san's farm, inheriting its history and resources to hone his crafts. Um, his style, again, doing research and kind of uh, what it is. Um, he is going to be typically wearing what is called a samue. Um, which is kind of like the, uh, like, you know, uh, get up that a f uh, fisher farmer wears. And it's hard to describe without, like, pointing out, like, you know, years of working in, like, uh, the Edo, Japanese Edo countryside and such. Um, of course, uh, button up, button up shirts, all that. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta look styling. Um, his decor, of course, will be Japanese countryside, which will help with the mods that I have found. He is going to be romancing Kaylee. Shush. Again, can't find a good Stardew Valley playlist without ads. Since all I have is YouTube and not Spotify or anything. Oof. Alright. He is going to be romancing Haley. Since he um, is also a fisherman... Uh, he is going to be taking the Riverland farm with a fruit cave. I have never done a Riverland farm. There are many farm layouts that I have never done. So again, another new experience for us with uh, this one. Of course, his specialties are going to be fishing. All aspects of fishing. The really cool thing about the Riverland farm with the recent update is that they also added a smoker. Your Riverland farm comes with one smoker uh, right off the bat. So, of course, fishing, he's going to be doing, like, you know, rod fishing, rivers, ocean, lakes, crab pots, uh, the fish ponds, the smoker, all the ways for him to fish, make food, make money, etc. Um, he'll also dabble in panning because, of course, I know it's like panning is kind of one of those things that I feel falls to the wayside, but I'm still trying to break out of you know, leaving some aspects of Stardew behind. So he'll be dabbling in panning. Um, he's also going to raise sunflowers and uh, rice. He will also do artisan goods such as uh, oil and uh, fish row. Um, you know, again, uh, Haley loves sunflowers. Just thinking about all the things and making it come together for their romantic partners and stuff. Um, his job is going to be a sushi chef or a shukunin. Where a shokunin is not like the top of the top skill of a sushi chef, but is one that is developing his skills in uh, the study of uh, sushi and such. And also a fish fisherman, which they call Ryoshi. You know, again, having kind of a Japanese, a Japanese gentleman, you know, try to introduce a little bit of a uh, language and uh, history to you guys here and there. Not that it's much, but uh, of course, you know, being a sushi chef makes sense to raise uh, rice etc which again you know with the mods you know we'll get in we'll, we'll we'll get into that this is all just a very snippet of uh what all these characters are going to be about so look forward to it with that all right our next gentleman is alias El elias elias words um looking for beauty in the countryside elias wants to create a symphony of drinks for all tastes and ages his style is going to be kind of a country gentleman i kind of thought of like someone that is southern you know being from somebody raised in the southern u.s all our life and such i tried to go back to like you know 
um, almost kind of gone gone with the wind esque sort of thing, but definitely more of like a um, an entrepreneur basis for this. Um, but his decor is going to be kind of a cottage core winery. He will also be romancing Leah. Um, he's going to get the Four Corners Farm with the Fruit Cave. His specialties his specialty is going to be a brewery, um, juices, wine, pale ale, beers, all those things. He will also be raising goats and pigs while harvesting truffles, uh, growing all kinds of berries and grapes. Again, if you're going to be doing juices and all kinds of brewery stuff, you need the good fruit. You need all the fruit. So that is what we will be doing, like all of the uh, bush and vine fruits and stuff. So his job is going to be what is called a vintner. Um, again, did a lot of research in terms of giving these, giving everyone their own job. And vintner is literally um, not like... It's a fancier word for winemaker in such a way where it's like, you know, they're growing their own stuff and uh, making their own brews with it. All right. And again, there is even more information to all of these characters on the uh, multi-life document, exclamation mark, multi-life. Um, all right. And then our next one, here is our last viewer created character lagus um he also submitted to have his own character for a uh, multi-life so thank you again lagus for submitting him for that lagus loves all critters especially ducks he also raises seasonal produce to keep the land himself and his animals happy and healthy he said his style he's very big on the color green and all green things and forest green being his favorite color um decor also anything green easy enough um you gotta stick with what you love um he chose to romance maru he also picked the meadowland farm because of course it was brand new at the time when it came out just this past spring um he'll also get a fruit cave uh, his specialty of course is going to be ducks he also chose otters as uh, his special animal um, he also wants to raise rabbits and goats he will also be raising green beans, strawberries, corn, sunflowers, broccoli, and cranberries. Kind of a nice mix with each season in terms of crops and such. Um, he wants to also do uh, jams and pickles, goat cheese, wool, and cloth. Again, thinking back to, you know, interest um, for uh, Maru, kind of melding those together where it's like he has his, his interests, but also stuff that can be liked or loved by romantic interests. All that. So, of course, in trying to think of what would be a good job for a Lagoose, especially as passionate as he has been in sharing about raising his ducks, um, growing crops and things um, from where he is in Hawaii, um, my thought was his job would be animal conservationalist, someone um, that, you know, develops as uh, wonderful and as healthy an environment for raising his animals while also, you know, raising for himself. But yeah, thank you again, Lagus, for submitting for that. Hopefully I lived up to y'all's expectations with the uh, viewer submitted characters. Alright, and then we've got Kristoff. Uh, Kristoff enjoys music and Austrian food, hoping to bring a sense of home to the valley. Um, kind of what I thought about with him. Also, we got ads. I'm going to snooze those. Snooze those real quick. Because we can finish this up real easily. But uh, kind of with uh, Kristoff, you know, not trying to uh, think about uh, Anna and Kristoff from uh, uh, Frozen and the Frozen universe. Looks good? Good. Good, good, good. But um, just uh, someone that was kind of like, you know, European and such again. I try not to think, try not to, you know, think too much outside of what I do or I don't know when making characters or making stories and such um, but uh, anyway uh, his style is going to be uh, collared shirts jackets he's going to be kind of a city chic kind of a metropolitan relocated to the valley in a sense while still bringing some touches of home uh, his decor is going to be modern and artistic he will be romancing Abigail he is also going to have the normal standard farm with a fruit cave. His specialties will be potatoes and wheat, corn, apples, beets, and pumpkins and bananas. I tell you guys, when I did a lot of research in terms of trying to um, 
you know, if I related it to um, a country, to an area, like with France and Japan and now Austria and such, I researched what kinds of foods and uh, things that these characters would be into. And that, that's a lot of the kinds of foods that are in uh, Austria. A lot of potatoes, a lot of corn, a lot of breads and apples and pumpkins and things like that. Which again, it all matches up pretty nicely with uh, Abigail and her interests. He also wants to raise uh, chickens and cows. He will also be doing artisan goods like cheese, mayo, and coffee. So his job, I've called it a European farmsteader instead of a homesteader, is that he's a farmsteader in such a way. All right. And then our next gentleman, we've got Flint. No way, no, no way in relation or opposition to other characters that may or may not be in Stardew Valley. What are you talking about? Uh, Flint is a simple man who enjoys the labor and yield of the earth, along with anything that makes him or others smile. Um, his style is overall he overalls he also likes all the fun in the weird shirts um, his decor will also be just casual and cozy you know just kind of a guy that's just out there living life and not worrying too much about what him or his house looks like and just you know kind of goes with his interests he will be romancing emily uh, he also has the hilltop farm which has a lot of uh, mining prospects um, and uh, geodes and things uh, spread throughout it. He will also get the mushroom cave. So of course his specialties are going to be mining. He's going to be growing uh, root vegetables um, along with uh, eggplants and wheat. He will also raise cows and sheep and uh, develop uh, milk, cheese, and wool. Again, um, interest going back to uh, their uh, romantic partner since Emily likes like all gems, the survival burger, and uh, wool and cloth. So it works out. So of course, Flynn's job will be prospector um, with, you know, being a mining person, but also, uh, you know, not just being a miner and everything. A prospector, you know, looks for all of the good that the earth and things have to offer. Let me see. All right. And that, of course, is all of our characters. That is all 12 of our characters for Multi-Life. So these are all the characters and the stories that we are going to be experiencing and developing, at least for the next year or more, of course. But then you're like, Bullseye, how do we choose? What character do we choose? You know, how are we going to decide what character we want to start with? Well, I've got you guys, so don't y'all worry. So let me go ahead and close that out. All right. But yeah, y'all ask, how are we going to choose? Well, in kind of watching some other streams and seeing some other ideas in terms of uh, keeping it fair, uh, keeping it fair of what characters we're going to choose, we are going to spin a wheel. And now you guys see that uh, Um, all the development of the titles for each of the characters comes into play while I, you know, cho took each and every one of y'all's uh, characters, gave you your own like little signature, and uh, came up with this uh, neat little wheel design and such. Oh, one more snooze. One more snooze, no ads. But yeah, this is how we are going to pick our characters, how we're going to pick each and every character going forward we're going to go to the wheel and decide who our first file is going to be who our first character is going to be the pictures and everything i know i was so happy with it when i showed it to spirit the other day he was like that's actually really good baby very nice so <laughs> i was very pleased with it but all right if youtube will behave old All right, but yeah, let us see who our first character is going to be in multi-life. <gasps> we start with Alana, let's go! I promise, I made these equally weighted as possible. And I did not, I tested, I tested each file or I tested the spin to be sure that it was rolling equally 
So, I did not try to influence this whatsoever. I know I said that I was really looking forward to playing with Alana's file, but oh man, I was not expecting her to be the first one off the bat. That's actually pretty fantastic. So, we will be playing Alana's character, which I'm very excited about.